Hey guys, Shane here. Real quick, before we get started on this week's video, I want to remind you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Do check to make sure you haven't been unsubscribed by YouTube because it seems that that's been a thing recently, according to a couple of people who've reached out. Give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, and let me know what you think. Now, on to the video. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. You're joining Trains with Shane here on the Disgusting Workbench. Today we've got kind of an oddity. Um, sometimes you find something on eBay and you just kind of have to have it, almost irrespective of cost. I don't have a ton of usable income to throw around you know, on, on stuff, but I do keep a, a little bit aside for just this kind of, uh, this kind of thing. So what did I get myself into this time, Shane, you may ask? Well, it's got a flag on it. So I had a hard time trying to find any solid information about what I actually have here. Okay. It's Atlas. Okay. It's an Atlas. This is an MKT GP40 in their bicentennial paint scheme. By Inscale Collector. So, I mean... It looks like retail packaging to me, right? I mean, look at this. Looks like the real deal. Like it came from Atlas like this. While I am pretty sure that the base unit came from Atlas, I'll bet it came as an undecorated unit, and this was done custom by a third-party group. I was able to find a little bit of info about N-Scale Collector, which isn't even the name of the website anymore. Now I think it's the N-Scale Enthusiast. And I think that this is an, is an outfit out of Louisville, Kentucky. That's about all I know. Atlas didn't have any information on this because I emailed them and asked. Um... The N-Scale Enthusiast website is pretty, it's pretty basic. There's not a lot going on there. Looks like there might be some want ads and stuff like that. And I think that these were a custom run that those guys did um, a couple years ago, maybe as far back as like 2008 or something like that. Um, they made locomotives and cabooses. I haven't been able to find a caboose yet. If anyone's got one, um, hit me up. My, uh, my contact information is in the about section of the channel. Um, I'm not going to pay a million bucks for one, but I'd like to have one for the set. So, um, a couple of outfits made these decal sets and, and they're still available. Um, I think Circus City decals may be another one. Um, I don't know if Microscale or CMR or any of those other guys, but I'm pretty sure Circuit City at least made them. So you could easily make one of these yourself, and I've seen them for sale online. But I've only ran across one of these one other time as in this type of retail-looking packaging. And it's actually really good. So if this is a custom unit, it was done to a pretty high standard. So uh, I'm very glad to have this and add it to the collection as anyone who's been around my channel for any length of time knows. I love MKT. That uh, was my home railroad growing up in Carrollton, Texas in the uh, 80s and very early 90s before we moved. Um, so let's take a look, see what we've got. I got this off of eBay. Um, a guy posted it wanted way too much money for it, even more than I thought was sufficient. I sent him an offer. We kind of met in the middle on a on a 
counter offer. It was more than I really wanted to spend on something um, like this, but it wasn't horrible in the in the end scheme of things. Um, normally, I'd, I'd I'd chill out some money for stuff with DCC and sound, but these days, in scale DCC and sound, I've, I've kind of gotten a sour taste for it as of late. So DC is is really what I'm going to stick with for the short term. So, um, yeah, let's get in here and take a look. Like I said, it looks absolutely retail. We've got a cardboard insert. We've got our MKT logos, the Katie 1776, our Bicentennial, the end, the end caps, you know, MKT GP40, Bicentennial. There is a little bit of potted history here about this particular unit. And uh, the Katie's um, 1776 celebratory stuff. Um, I mean, it looks 100% legit. Um, I couldn't have bought a new GP40 and paid someone to decal and paint one up for me for what I paid for this. So, to me, it's worth it. Let's see. I've got a bag of goodies here. Looks like we have a couple of Rapido style couplers and. I don't know how well this is showing up I can't even really see it that well myself a plow also properly painted sealed in a little baggie as it would be so put those aside let's get up in your teeth here and get a zoom in I mean, look how how crisp this is. I mean, honestly, they look like paint appliques. They don't look like decals. 200 on the side might show a little bit of a, a shiny box like a decal. Even the the paint on the flag looks good, and it's it's sunken into the cracks, so it might be a little bit right here. You guys can see that. So again, um, it very well could be decal, but it sure looks good. I mean, it is certainly better than anything I could have ever hoped to do with decals. Like I said, this looks like paint. So let's get this thing out of the box here. Try not to have it come flying. Looks like we got our documentation. This thing is not coming out of here easy. We're going to have to persuade. All right, set our box aside. A little bit of schmutz up there. Number boards look great. Again, if, if these are decals, the, the, the application of them is absolutely perfect I think it might actually be a paint application I, I don't know you guys tell me if anybody out there knows anything specifically about this run about in scale collector about any of that drop it in the comments I'd really like to know what I've got here got our MU box there 
painted. Light um, hose detail um, and pilot detail, molded in coupler, cut lever. It looks like we've got our uh, magnomatic style um, trick pin coupler. Yellow handrails on the front, black down the sides. We've got our tank detail with our filler and our um, level gauge. Pretty basic truck detail. Again, happy birthday United States for the bicentennial. Molded in fan grill. I don't think there are any separately applied parts on this with maybe the exception of the of the MU boxes on each end, but I think those might be cast in. Pretty good. I mean, the, the detail on that is just super sharp. The parting lines are great. Let's look on the bottom. Atlas made in China. See, even the under sills are painted to match. Wheels are pretty clean. This thing has seen real time. It hasn't seen a lot of it. So yeah, I, I love it. Like I said, I knew that these existed and I've never really searched specifically for one, but I ran across this one in my eBay travels and um, I was gonna make it mine. So what do you say we quit talking about it and do what we do and get this onto a test track, find out what it does and what it doesn't do. I'll see you guys over there. All right, we have made room on the disgusting workbench for the Steve's Trains Executive Portable Switching Layout. We are running this on DC because it is DC, and I've got the Rokuhan controller over there plugged in with an AC adapter. So let's turn it on, set our direction, and dial up a little current here. So we've already got life on our number boards and our headlight. And we're creeping. We are not at a high level of voltage here just yet. So this is good news already. Turn it up a little. Okay, let's bring her back. I noticed that the uh, number boards lit up as well. A little more power this time. Excellent. I am very glad that this one runs because it is the most amount of money I've ever paid for a DC locomotive. That wasn't a custom paint job. At least not one that I was buying and then having a custom paint job added. Which is to say, this was pretty close, but for the quality um, that this is, I I would have been happy uh, paying similar money for one that was obviously um, a, a custom one-off because like I said, the quality of this is so good. But add in all the, the little extras like with the box here and uh, all of that and it just, uh, it's just icing on the cake for an MKT fan like me. So, um, 
yeah, that's going to be it for this Will It Run video. So now is the point where we talk about how things are going. Um, just got done with Thanksgiving. I worked the entire week. Um, the type of work I do in a network operations center is 24-7, 365. And I believe every single one of my colleagues has a family. Um, either wives or husbands and children. And in a couple of cases, I think there's a grandkid too. So me being single this year, I, uh, I volunteered to work and, and cover it so that, uh, that everyone could spend as much time as they could with their immediate families. And I'll be doing the same for Christmas as well. Um, 2024 has beat me up pretty good. There, there have been a couple of wins, but, you know, those weren't luck or anything. Those were financial milestones of mine that I've really worked hard over the years to, to, to reach. And, um, so, um, yeah, I, aside from losing my dad in 2018, um, 2024 so far has been, been pretty high up there on really not good years. Um, just as far as overall happiness goes. Um, I know I talked with this, about this on a video a couple of weeks ago, but, um, yeah, I'm just going to plug along, you know, no use in, uh, sitting at home crying about it all the time. Uh, tomorrow's Monday. Monday is when I run my errands and when I get tacos from my favorite little place. So tacos are going to happen. And um, I'll, uh, I'll get in my American V8 car with a manual transmission. And the weather is supposed to be decent. Should be near 65 or 70. So I'll have the windows down, the music up, and um, eight cylinders worth of horsepower via combustion. Um, and I guarantee you that for that time, things will be a lot better. So trust me, I've got my my happy places. Um, what about trains? You know, trains are good. I just have a very severe lack of space. Um, the switching layout here is pretty good. And if I didn't have this, I'd probably have nothing to run trains on period right now. Um, I've got an idea to maybe do a, a portable layout. Um, you guys know that I watch Steve's trains all the time, and I am continual in continual awe of his resourcefulness and his his focus on being able to visualize a project and then just put the hammer down and bust it out and get it done you know I, I wish I wish I had those traits I really do because I've got so many little projects that I've gathered materials for and just not done um, but in the in the vein of the uh, portable layout here the portable switching layout this and I'll pick the camera up here and show you from here to here is about four feet long. It's about 48 inches. And I can sit this on my desk with a, with a little bit of overhang, but it's got a solid base, so it doesn't matter. And this is about, I don't know, eight inches. Give me a second. I've got a measuring tape. 
let's find out. Six inches. So if we get out to, let's say, 18 inches, that's not an incredibly unreasonable square and if we get out to 24 inches it starts to get a little a little gangly you see the computer battery backup down there um, but I'm thinking that if I can come up with something and jerk the Kato uh, railer onto the floor if I can come up with something that's you know between 18 and 24 inches at the very least with 18 inches, I could run a, a nine inch radius curve. And while I wouldn't be able to probably run most six axle stuff um, on that kind of radius, most of the four axle stuff will, I guarantee this GP40 will do it. Um, I don't remember what the really small radius Kato um, curves are. I think they're like six and three quarter or something like that, or I, I, whatever that is in Roman Catholic. Um, and all of the four axle stuff at the time that I had would run on that. Um, you guys saw it in my early videos. It was the little loop track on the Disgusting Workbench 1.0. Um, where I did my some of my earliest stuff. So um, I could do, you know, the next size up and, you know, have something as long as this and just maybe two or three times wider and have room for something that I could do like a continuous loop on, plus maybe have some infield switching opportunities. I've come up with a design. Let me pull that up on Yield Computer over here. And show you what I've got. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this too well or not. Let me maximize. So the box is 48 inches scale wide and top to bottom, I think is 16 inches, 15 inches. Um, so that's with the smallest radius curves that I could still comfortably fit a, um, a four axle locomotive around with almost four foot of maybe industrial spurs or something right here with um, a platform, you know, or a passing siding, you know, for, for I don't know what, but it's got a loop for continuous running if I feel like doing that. And, um, I think it would work. Um, this is all laid out with uh, Kato Unitrack um, templates, and I've already got all of these pieces, um, including all the turnout, all the short pieces, um, stuff like that. So all we need to do, all I need to do is put it together. That's all I need to do. Um, I've got some coroplast board, which if you're not familiar with what coroplast is, um, if you ever see like those um, like political signs and stuff that are put at on like street corners or garage sale happening or what, it's that plastic that is kind of a, almost a sandwich, but it's got ribs in the middle of it. it coroplast basically means corrugated plastic but what it is it's basically a cardboard type of construction but made in plastic 
Um, and I've got a 24 by 48 inch um, rectangle of that. I've got two of them. And what I was thinking is I could use those and make a sandwich with that one inch pink foam and have something that is not only lightweight but fairly rigid. Or, and, and I, could, I could build that either way. I could do pink foam with coroplast bread on the outside, or I could do just a layer of coroplast on the bottom with pink foam. And then if I have pink foam as my base layer, that gives me opportunities to dig into it and do, you know, whatever little rivers or any of that stuff, should I choose to do that. Or, you know, if I don't really need to sculpt any of it, I could just have the foam and coroplast and it would end up, because the coroplast I think is either quarter inch or four millimeter. Um, yeah, four millimeter or quarter inch or something like that. So the whole thing with the base would probably be about an inch and a half thick, you know? Which is this big, or it's, you know, this is three eighths here, so probably, I don't know, that thick and weigh not much. And the reason I want to do that is because, as much as you guys know, I love watching Steve's trains. He builds something and calls it portable and builds it out of three eighths lumber you know including like full sides drawers and a, a curio top and all that and that thing's got to weigh every bit of 65 70 pounds and that's portable only in the academic sense to me so what i want what what the end result is is i want something like this where i can pick this up with one hand stand it up against the wall when I'm not using it, and that's exactly where this lives. It lives stood up against the wall when I'm not using it. But I want it to be as light as I can reasonably make it. There's not going to be a, a ton of structures or anything on it. It's not going to have 700 pounds of plaster. Um, but then again, you know, like plastic model structures really don't weigh a whole lot. Um, and I could do some of those paper buildings or ones that are made out of foam board, you know, those are pretty darn cool. The ones that are made out of cardstock, Steve's done videos on those, I think, if I remember correctly. You know, they're out there, and it can be done. And I think what, what I want to try to do is make that, but see how light I can make it and still have it be reasonably strong, you know, and not flex or, or anything like that. And... Um, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Is that something you'd like to see? Um, let me know because the more um, you guys encourage me, the more likely I am to get off of my butt and actually do it. Um, so let me know what you think about that. In the meantime, MKT GP40 Bicentennial. It's beautiful. It runs great. I am beyond happy with it. I want to thank you guys for joining me on another episode of Trains with Shane. I guess we can call this a will it run because it is it is used and you know at this point it's what 16 years old. It's old enough to drive so I guess we can call it a will it run because it wasn't a, a guarantee that it would. Heck, buying something brand new retail isn't a guarantee that it's going to run these days. So, um, the next video will probably land the week of Christmas, a couple of days prior to Christmas. Um, got something a little special for that. Um, working with my buddy Peter, the Alco Diesel guy, on a little something. Um... I'm not sure if that will be that Monday's video, the 23rd, or if I'll do something and then do a video on Christmas Day proper. But, you know, there are options. 
So, again, thank you to all you guys who have liked, commented, and subscribed. Thank you to both my patron supporters, Computer Guy and RC Harley. Um, you guys help dull the sting of the financial um, upkeep of this channel. Um, oh, also, I'm going to be listing some stuff for sale here in a couple of weeks. Um, zoom, here is the box of stuff so far. You have seen most of these on the channel. Um, this is a, a DCC uh, Intermountain SD40-2. DCC and sound. Rapido FP... FP what? FL7. It's got low sound from the factory. A couple of old Burlington Northern um, Atlas units made by Kato. Those things run like sewing machines. Um, this is a little Baldwin switcher. That's a 3D printed shell and a custom um, paint job. And it's got low sound installed. I did a video on this one. An old Arnold GG1 Phase 1 Amtrak. Let's see. Um, that is an Alco DL109, I think, if I remember right, um, with attached um, Santa Fe corrugated car that has DCC and sound installed. I did have a video on that. Got a Paragon 4 NW2 down here. Um, DCC and sound. It runs. I'm not very happy with it. Um, and uh, I'll... Wh whoever's interested in that, I'll, I'll let you guys... I'll discuss what's not right about it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the, the for sale box for now. I'll end up making an official listing and, and stuff at, at some later point. Um, my buddy RC Harley has first dibs on that Norfolk Southern SD40-2 with DCC, non-sound. Um, so Harley, if you want that one, you know how to get a hold of me. Um, but yeah, that's all I got going, man. I really need to start making scripts for these things. So, for the next couple weeks, stay safe, be good to each other, and I'll see you soon.